guys now or never right the markets are, are at a point where we need to really really see this start to turn around okay so what we're gonna do here guys in this video we're gonna review the smh we're gonna look at the spy the cues idolium and the dow and we're gonna look for clues to see what levels we need to be on need to be on watch and what levels need to hold in order for us to hold conviction that this is in fact the resumption to the upside so before we dive into the analysis guys thank you so much for tuning in really appreciate it give this video a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe to the channel as it'll help this channel grow so thank you so much in advance really appreciate it and let's dive into the analysis so you guys already know smh has been a chart of interest for me because the smh is a big industry group within tech that is essentially important right so the chart here has always been in question and then what do i mean by that whether or not this is in fact a whole three way <clears throat> excuse me a whole wave a whole three wave pullback and if we're going to start heading higher now a couple of days ago i was mentioning to you guys that this was the low that needed to be held all right we unfortunately broke below it so we needed to find another wave structure that will let us know that perhaps we may see further downside just a bit and then we start heading on higher but if we want to get pretty biased to a bullish side which i don't suggest anybody do we will take a look at the line chart and technically speaking from an LA wave standpoint we haven't invalidated any rules here because why we have you know if you guys remember right we have been we have been considering this to be the wave one and then there's the wave two now this is way too deep this is not a wave two a normal wave two so for that reason i'm not leaning anymore towards this count but it is still yet valid we haven't technically broken this low so the low here was around 237.60 ish while the low here was around 240 238 ish all right and therefore not invalidated but for argument's sake we're going to say it is so for that reason what we're going to do here is that we're going to take a look at our alternate account and what that looks like all right so it is still suggesting that instead of us resuming to the uptrend to the upside with this being the wave one this this being the pullback into the wave two and then the third up this is the a b and c of wave four all right that means that in the c wave of the wave four we have five subdivisions five different smaller waves and that this is a wave one two the third wave was a 1618 extension of wave one and two so pretty valid we found support and now we're trending higher and now we're going to see if we're going to hold resistance at 256 and 237 the ultimate the ultimate scenario here that will discount this structure for for good and give us hope that that the opportunity to the upside is at play here because this market to be frank with you has been really crazy is the break above this wave one all right if price action continues on higher and we break this level retest it and then we go that is confirmation that is confirmation number one actually confirmation number two will be the break of that obviously confirmation number two the retest but the retest will be in three waves all right whether this is the one or the two whatever it is this will need to be retested in three waves hold support and then go so somewhere around here if we get to retest the support level that'll be the confirmation that the resumption to the uptrend is at play however if we hold resistance at these levels here <coughs> excuse me if we hold resistance at 256 and 253 and we head on lower then unfortunately the case is that we are still seeing correction okay guys so again be aware of the 256 253 dollar region the, that, that zone of, for resistance and then we pull back and validation of this comes in at 261 all right 74 the higher wave one all right let's take a quick look at the spy the spy here is actually letting us know that we may be looking at a possible one two scenario so looking at our bullish count okay here on the spy we have our wave four completed back on march the 8th one two three four five to the one abc to the to the to the two between the 50 percent and the 618 of this rally from our march 15th low 438 and 432 respectively now the C wave came in at exactly 100% extension of wave one, or wave A and wave B. Okay, that's pretty valid. That's pretty good, right? Actually, no, that's not true. Let me do this again for us here. So from A to B to C is the 1618. Okay, my apologies. The 1618. It was an extension of 1618 
and now the C wave found support. All right. What it's looking like on the RSI is that we made a low here, right, on April the 12th, and we made a lower low on price action again on April the 18th while maintaining a higher low on the RSI divergence. And we're seeing the MACD um, moving averages in the, in the histogram ticking higher as well. So we have a bit of evidence here that suggests we may be heading higher. All right, we, this may have been the wave two pullback. Now, you guys got to understand something. From an Elliott wave standpoint, a wave two is technically designed to shake out speculative traders. All right, it is technically designed to give deeper pullbacks on the zigzag. Okay, that's why wave twos often see zigzags rather than flat corrections because zigzags are often deeper. Okay, to the point where you start losing conviction of your analysis and then you get out of your trade and then the stock goes up or the index or whatever you're looking at starts heading on higher and then you start getting FOMO. All right. My advice, and this is what I do that helps me, is that I, I hold strong to my positions. All right. Even if I'm playing options, I with the mentality, if I go in with an options trade, I know that at some point, right, these options are obviously designed to go worthless, right, expire worthless. So for that reason, a lot of the times we hold shares and we can withstand this type of whipsaw and this type of correction. Anyway, that's for that's a conversation for another day. So stay positive, stay objective, and I know you guys are going to do well. Anyway, so if we fail to hold the support, we're going to have to take a look at our alternate count. And this is the freaking count that I don't want it to play. All right. So unfortunately, this will suggest that we have way more downside to go. All right. And instead, we have instead of seeing this as a wave three, all right, in our alternate account, if I may take a look at this again with you, right, this is the wave three, four, and five. We're looking at this as an actual wave one. So everything from COVID up until today, right, from March 2020 low up until January, that was a wave one. I mean, this is a very, very bullish count, but in the short term, it's painful. All right, so we have an A wave, three wave to the B, which look at this, guys. This came into a precise 618, right? Actually, 786, rather. Okay. So a 786, 464.07 to the B, and now we're making the wave one, resistance into the wave two, three, four, and five. So what are the levels that we must watch? Here, we have to watch if this is the wave one, this wave two cannot break above the origin of the wave one, correct? That's LA wave. I mean, that's a guideline, right? And that invalidates this count. Wave twos cannot go beyond the territory of wave one. All right. So likely wave two will come into resistance. If we break above this high, if we end up taking it out, then we likely have this in, at hand that the wave three is in the making. So at that point, that will be confirmation that this is actually ongoing presumption to the upside. Okay, guys. So Again, let's rephrase. Let, let's let's um recap here. So if we hold support at 438, 432, and then break this high at 468.2, then this count is at play. However, if we start breaking resistance, I, I'm sorry, if we start rejecting around the zone between 452 and 448, and we head on lower, then this is at play. If we keep on pushing on higher, and hopefully we break this high here at 462, then this count gets validated and boom, we go to the upside. All right, guys, that's actually what I'm looking for. So over to the queues. Again, same deal with the queues. A one, two scenario, four, uh, 344, 337 is our support area. All right, wave four completed, one, two. The third wave is on the rise. If, if we see that the resistance holds. What is resistance here? I mean, if we see resistance break, my bad. Um, we want to see 357 and 353 break to the upside. All right. Otherwise, like in the spy, our alternate account <clears throat> will be a play here. But a chart that is giving me pretty good conviction is this one. All right. The Dow. So the wave three, WXY to the four. All right. We got our wave one. A maybe A, B, and C, or maybe this is already A, B, and C. All right. But either way, we found support at the 50% retracement of wave one which is pretty pretty accurate here and there's also a trend line resistance now trending into support so if we keep on heading on higher and we take out this high here on the wave one at 353.81 it is likely that we're going to start heading on higher all right guys so this chart 
pay attention to this one. The XOY also is one of concern, but we seem to be finding support and turning around. Remember, I've always been advocating that this was a chart that is also a, this weights about 12% <clears throat> of the SPY. So it's a pretty important chart. And this one has been developing bearish, but we see that this may be the A, B, or the one, two, three, four, five of the wave C, or this is the wave one, the two, right? Which we clearly see that this probably holds support around the 50%, as you can clearly see there. So it is likely that maybe this is the one, two, and then we go, all right? So if we start rejecting the zone and we break lower, then it is likely that we are in store and I play for more downside opportunities. Now, didn't help that Netflix tanked on earnings. That is really giving a really great cloud area and sentiment in the markets, all right? Because I think a lot of that also happened to be with the cancellations of their servers over in Russia with everything that's going on geopolitically and overseas that can that can weigh negatively on the markets okay guys so anyway thank you so much for tuning in i really hope this helped let me know if you guys have any questions comment down below subscribe to the channel give this video a thumbs up join training wave see you guys tomorrow take care